welcome back again. Today we're going to talk a little bit about hash codes. Hash codes figure into the Bitcoin algorithm a little bit. Uh, they are actually more broadly used in computing generally though, and so we're going to talk about them in a, um, in a general way before we look at specifically how they're used in Bitcoin. So we're going to be talking about hash codes today. All right. You know, we're, we're pretty familiar with the, uh, a different idea than hash codes. Um, one that's similar, uh, it's the idea of a fingerprint. And I mean, actually, a fingerprint that's on your finger. Um, you know, each person has them. Uh, I'm going to step aside here so we can look at some graphics. Uh, each person has them. Uh, they're very, uh, they're unique. They're considered unique. Each person has their own pattern of ridges on their fingers that is special to them. And we've come to be able to use them to identify a person. Traditionally, this has been done in law enforcement. But we've seen recently with new computing devices that the fingerprint has been able to be read digitally so that we can identify a person by the patterns of, their, um, of the ridges on their finger. In a lot of ways, it's a shortcut. It's a way that we can identify a person uh, without having to um, do a more elaborate background check or ask them a lot of questions. We can summarize their identity by looking at their fingerprint and then giving them access to whatever they should have access to or making them accountable for whatever they should be accountable for based on the matching of a record of a fingerprint with the fingerprint that we observe. Um, so in that way, they're a way of referencing the person. And you know, considering the complexity of a, a whole body, a whole human being, the fingerprint is a relatively simple pattern that can uniquely identify someone. So the way I might use that fingerprint is I might say, well, in a crime scene, uh, I might find that I would like to um, uh, find who is the criminal at the crime scene. All right. In a crime scene scenario, I would search the uh, crime scene for fingerprints using dust or brushes or special um, equipment. If I found a fingerprint, then I could return back to uh, the police station and look up um, either in paper records or in a digital database I could look for people that have that same fingerprint. And if that person is in the records, uh, then we can use that fingerprint to establish evidence that that person was at the crime scene. All right, so that's the way we might use a fingerprint in a crime scene. Um, another place you might use it is at uh, an airport or at a checkpoint of some point, of some sort. At an airport or a checkpoint, you might have someone come up to a gateway and um, scan their fingerprint, evaluate their fingerprint. Also, like in the crime scene example, they would check that fingerprint against a database of known fingerprints. And if there was a match, then you could say that that then you could look and evaluate that person based on knowing who they are. And you could say yes, they should be allowed to pass through the checkpoint, or no, they're not allowed to pass through the checkpoint. Um, in some cases, it may be that if their fingerprint isn't in the database, then the answer is just a straight out no. In other cases, it may be that if their fingerprint is in the database, it indicates that they um, should not be allowed through. So it kind of depends on how it's being used and what exactly the checkpoint is. But basically, we use that as a summary of that person to look them up, see if they should be able to go through a checkpoint. All right. Another way you might use a fingerprint is in a computer system. Uh, you might use it instead of a password. So in this case, you would have a device that's on your computer that's able to read your fingerprint. And if the fingerprint that's read matches a fingerprint that has been stored on that computer, then the computer will unlock. And so your fingerprint is being used as a summary of your identity, and it confers upon you the rights of whatever rights that your, your identity has been given, for example, the ability to use a computer. And that's done by matching a summary of you, your fingerprint, with a summary of you that's stored in the computer, a digital version of the fingerprint. Okay, so fingerprints are captured from a person, uh, they're compared to a database or a record of fingerprints, and if there's a match that there's that, um, then you are the person uh, that is recorded in the database and you're allowed to have some uh, records as a result. So there's the physical fingerprint, and then there's a database, and if there's a match, then great. Uh, we know you get the rights to whatever uh, your fingerprint and the database uh, say you should be allowed to have rights to. All right, great. So that's how we use fingerprints generally. Well, 
A hash code is a fingerprint for digital data. Um, when I say digital data, I can mean many, uh, I include many different things. For example, the digital data might be a file, it might be a digital photograph, or it could be um, an email message. Each of these things are digital objects. Um, that we might like to make a fingerprint of. And when we, call, when we take a fingerprint of one of these digital objects, um, we call that a hash code. Right? Now, just like a fingerprint is used to summarize the identity of a person, a hash code is used to summarize the identity of the digital data. So hash codes are used to determine if you're looking at the same digital data um, or whether the digital data has been changed. So here's an example. Imagine that you're an accountant and um, you are responsible for doing an evaluation of a very large uh, set of financial transactions, a very large database of financial transactions, and you're working as a part of a team because this is a very large database. But over time, there have been lots of different copies of this database. As new transactions have come in, as different things have been edited, and so it's very important that your team is all working with the same database to do the analysis on the same digital transactions. So what you might do is rather than taking a database with, rather than having person A uh, take their copy of their database and compare, compare it to person B's copy of the database, uh, by just checking directly, what you could do instead is you could take create a hash code from one of these databases. And you could say, okay, well, does the hash code of A match the hash code of B? And if it does, then we're working on the same data. And the reason why you might want to do this is because if these databases are very large, it would take way too much time to transmit the database from one place to another or to go through each entry in the database and validate that it matches every single entry in the other, other database. But these hash codes can be relatively fast to calculate. And so what we can do is we can say, well, the database that I'm working with has hash code, has one hash code. Hey, um, hey colleague over there with the copy of the database that you're working with, does your database have the same hash code? If it is, then we're doing the analysis on the same data. And, it, and we can be sure of that because we've used this fingerprint of our data in order to validate that we're working on the same thing. All right. Um, another way that you could use a hash code is you could use it in a password system. So here's how you might, might do that. Let's imagine that you are a computer and you're trying to verify whether or not someone has uh, a valid password or they present a valid password so that they can get access to their files or um, some other resources. So your computer system is here and your person is here. Maybe you have two people. Person A and person B. And person A has a password in their head that they're thinking of. And the computer needs to remember what that password is. Well, what the, what the person can do is the person can send the hash code of their password to the computer. And the computer can keep track of the hash code of person A in their computer. And then you can compare whether or not these two things match. Um, if they do, then you can be sure that the person has presented the correct password. Now the advantage of this is that when a computer gets broken into, if a bad guy captures all of the hash codes, it isn't really that big of a problem because it's not the hash code that you have to match. It's the password that gets converted, that a fingerprint is taken of the password, and then that fingerprint is compared. And so even if the fingerprint is captured, that doesn't mean that the password has been captured. And so now person B 
um, or so person A's password is, is fine, uh, the hash code has been compromised, but the password hasn't been compromised. So that, that's kind of um, good. Now that depends on one very critical aspect of, uh, the, of the password, that it's a one-way function. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, one thing I want to make clear, though, is that when we talk about hash codes, we're talking about a, the ability to take a fingerprint um, of every specific detail of a digital object. So when we take a hash code of a database, or we take the hash code, we make a hash code from a password, the digital object that we're making the hash of has to be exactly the same. This is in contrast to, for example, two different photographs that you might take of the same person, but that are different photographs. Even though they might have the same person in the photograph, if you take a fingerprint of those two digital objects, they're going to be different. So maybe we can represent that here. Let's imagine that we took two photographs of the same person. First photograph is black. And the first, second photograph is a, a, a second later, um, but not exactly the same photograph. If we take the digital objects, the JPEG files or whatever we're, however we're storing our uh, finger, storing our digital data, and we make a hash code of those things, we're going to get one hash code from this photo, and we're going to get another hash code from this photo. And even though the same person is in both photographs, these two things are not going to be equal because the digital data is different. Now, if we have this photo on our hard drive, and we make an exact copy of that photo, so that all the digital data is the same, then when we create when we take the hash code of that exact same digital file, it's going to produce the same fingerprint. So what's important about the fingerprint is the integrity of the digital data that is in that digital object, a file, an email message, a database, whatever it is. Not that whatever it's representing seems similar. So similar pictures aren't going to have the same fingerprint. Similar songs, if they're not exactly the same song, they're just the same song played by two different people or in two different um, concerts, those aren't going to have the same fingerprint. It has to be exactly the same digital data from beginning to end. Okay. Hash codes, because of this, hash codes are used to make sure that a photograph, that a digital object has not been altered. So you could imagine someone using a hash code in order to validate the integrity of a photograph. So let's say, for example, that this photograph was taken and it has a hash code A. Now let's imagine that someone takes that photograph and alters it um, to make that person uh, to, to they Photoshop it to make the person look better. Maybe gives them better hair. It could be very, very subtle changes that the, that the Photoshop introduces. But by checking the digital fingerprint, you can see that this would not be the same, uh, would not have the same fingerprint at all. Even to the degree that you can't necessarily, even to the degree that the Photoshop makes changes that are very, very difficult to see with the human eye. If any changes have been made to that photograph, these fingerprints won't match, and you'll know that the integrity of this digital object has been compromised. It is not the same as this one, and some change has been made, and so therefore you may not want to trust this copy. And you can do that by comparing small amounts of data that are captured in the fingerprint, just like small amounts of uh, your identity is captured in a physical fingerprint.